All right, welcome back. And the next video of the Brick Breaker series for uh, Construct 3, we are going to begin our coding process. So let's go ahead and add an event. We're going to pick system and start on uh, on start of layout. So one of the things I use, you will see this pretty much every time, is this little search window up here. This is a very useful feature that Construct Game Engine has set up. If you know what the name or part of the name of something you are trying to get to, you don't have to scroll and hunt for what you need each time. You can just start typing it up here and it will start filtering out what you need. And on start of layout is what I want. I'm going to choose that and I am going to add an action and I'm going to go to sprite my play button and I'm going to start typing in visible and we're going to say set visible to visible because when I first start the layout I want the play button to be visible so let's add another action text play and visible set to visible those two will be set to visible uh, let's actually if you have the free version you won't be able to do this not a big deal but if you have uh, the subscription version of uh, construct 3 or 2 we can add a family and that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna right click on it on that folder add family and I'm going to select all of the text objects and add them hit OK I'm going to name this FAM underscore text. So what this does is that groups all of those text pieces into this one object. And on the start of the layout, I have every piece of text, everything that I've created is visible. I want to change that. So add action. Let's pick FAM text and do set visible to invisible. So what we're doing, let's move that to the top. If you don't have the ability to make families, you're going to have to go in, add an action, and you're going to have to pick every text object one at a time and set its visibility to invisible. And you would do this with every single text piece. Not a big deal. Uh, there's, would we have five? Uh, yeah, five text objects. You'd have to do this five times. Um, it works the same. This is just easier if you have the subscription. So that's the first thing it's going to do on the start of the layout. It's going to set all those invisible, and then it's going to make these two objects visible. So let's play that. And there we go. There's our play button and the play text visible. All right. We gave our ball the bullet behavior. When I start the game, I do not want the ball to move. Let's go to sprites, let's select the ball, let's scroll down to the bullet behaviors, and I'm going to uh, choose set enabled and make sure that disabled is selected. And then let's go ahead and go to sprites. I'm going to also disable the paddle. And that is our eight direction. Set enabled to disabled. I also want all my variables to be reset in the beginning and uh, let's go ahead and do that let's go to system T let's type in set value pick set value block total to zero and then I'm going to highlight that I'm going to control C to copy control V to paste and one more so we should have three let's go into the second one double click and change block total to game over double click this third one change that to is playing so no matter what happens throughout the game, whenever we restart the layout, all of these variables will be reset. And that looks good. Now another thing I like to do is, if you right click, we can add a group. Now you can add groups in the free version. I will tell you this for future reference. I'm going to call this one initialize. There's my initialize group. For future reference, uh, adding a group adds an event and you are limited up to 50 events in the free version. I think we get about halfway there. I think we have somewhere between 20 and 30 events in this game. So 
we won't pass that, but poor future reference, uh, global variables and groups add events uh, as well as events, and I'll show you. We're going to take this whole block of code and I'm going to drag it to underneath initialize, and now I have a group that I can open and close. And you can see initialize is counted as one, and the actual block of code is counted as the second event. All right, good with initialize. I'm going to save, and let's code what's going to start the game. So I'm going to start with, a, let's go to system, and I want to compare variable. I want to know that is playing is set to zero. Now, the way I have is playing set up is I have it as a number, but it's going to read zero and one. That's what we're going, that's the information we're going to give it. Zero is false and one is equal to true. That's how we're going to do it. So when we start the game, is playing is going to be zero because we set it to zero up here. So this is saying if that variable is zero, then we're going to run this code. We're going to uh, right click, make sure this whole thing is highlighted, and over here on the far left of it, right click, go to add, uh, let's do a blank sub event so I can see what's happening. And I'm glad I did that because uh, I'm going to go to object types. I'm going to right click, add a new object type. Let's go down to keyboard. And also let's right click uh, I'm going to add a touch also. And then I'm going to move those two, if you have folders, into meta. And we're good there. So now over here on my sub event, I'm going to double click, meta, keyboard, on key pressed. And I'm going to say uh, the space key. So whenever I press the space key, I have the, bu uh, the play button and the play text visible. I'm going to make those invisible because I'm now playing and I don't want to see those anymore. So set visible to invisible. Let's do the same for the play text object. And oops, nope. Set visible. There we go. Set visible to invisible. And then I want, when those go invisible, I want to tell the player, I want to prompt them with ready, saying get ready to play. So set visible to visible. Oh, one of the things I forgot to do, let's go into our text object of ready. Click on the object text, text object ready. Let's go to behaviors, add a behavior, and pick flash. This just gives our game you know an extra little uh, visual feature so once ready is set to visible I'm gonna add an action text ready I'm gonna scroll down here to flash I want it to start flashing and I want it to flash on for half a second I want it to be off for half a second and I want this to all last for three seconds and then I want everything to wait for three seconds while that flashes. So nothing else can happen. So I'm going to say wait, and we're going to wait for three seconds, and then add an action, text ready. Scroll down to flash and say stop flashing. And then we're going to add an another action, text ready, set visibility to invisible. All right. So start of the layout we set everything to invisible all the text and then we said we want play and the play button visible we also disabled the ball movement and the paddle movement and we reset all of our variables and then we said if we press the space bar that'll start the game which makes our play button and play text invisible brings up ready flashes it for three seconds and then goes away so let's go ahead and take a look we have our play button, nothing's happening. I can't move the paddle, the ball's frozen. I'm gonna hit spacebar. Ready, flashing, and there we go. Everything looks good right now. Let's save that. And 
I am going to set the next event as text go. I'm going to set its visibility to visible. And then let's select the text object go in our project panel. Come over here to behaviors. Let's add a behavior and choose fade. Then we can add another action, text, go, and scroll down to fade and say start fade. Now over here in the uh, properties for the text object of go, I want to change the fade behavior. The fade in time to zero, wait time to zero, fade out time, I'm going to say one and a half seconds. Untick destroy. We do not want that to happen. So now let's see what we have. Everything looks good. Press space to play. Ready, flashes for three seconds, and then go comes on the screen and then fades out. I am going to right click. I'm going to add a group, and I'm going to say start game. And I'm going to take all of this code that we created, even our sub event and our main event, and I'm going to drag it under start game. So now we have another group. All right, so once we have pressed space and all this happens, we want uh, to be able to play. Right here in this area, right click, add, uh, let's add a, add a sub event. Let's click pick system, and I want trigger once while true. And that is going to be, let's add an action, sprite, ball, uh, scroll down here to, uh, oh, enable. That's what I want. I want to enable, enable our ball. And I also want to uh, add an event, pick the paddle, and let's do the same thing. Set enable to enable. And at that point, the game has started. So we want to add an action system, set value of is playing to true, which is represented with one. So now we are playing. And this will come into play a little later of why we want it to know about this variable. Uh, so I'll show you what that looks like. Can't move, uh, press space to play, still can't move, everything's good, and then go. And our ball starts moving, I can move the paddle. Uh, cool, except that when we start, our ball goes straight to the right. And the reason is that if I pick the ball, uh, we have this bullet behavior. It automatically goes to the uh, zero degrees, which is uh, directly to the right. So I want it to go in a different direction. Let's add an action, go to sprites, ball, let's go down here to our bullet behaviors, and I want to set the angle of motion. So what angle do I want? Well, I have a little uh, chart here. This is what I was talking about. Zero, it, this is what, how Construct 3 uh, and 2 game engine is set up. Right is uh, zero right here, and it goes clockwise. So it starts going down. This is 90 degrees, this is 180. 270 is straight up, and then back to 360, which is zero. So, what I want is for the ball to shoot upwards when we very first start, but I don't want it to shoot straight up, and I don't want it to be the same every time. So we're gonna set a random value. And I want that random value to be, I don't know, maybe like somewhere between 220 and 320. So I want the ball to shoot up in this direction or any of these directions. All right, I'm gonna say angle that I want it to, I wanna set the angle of motion to, I'm gonna type in random parentheses and would we say 220 comma 320 and done. So we wanna set the angle of motion to a random direction between 220 and 320 degrees. Let's slide that up underneath uh, enabled. And that should be good for our start game group here. Let's play this. All right, disabled, let's hit play. 
Ready, and go. And it kind of went off to an angle, not much of one. Uh, I'm going to hit F5 to refresh that. Let's do it again. And hopefully we'll get a much different angle. And we do. So it just picked a random angle between 220 and 320. All right. So we can play now. Uh, not much, but we have something to play with. I am going to stop this video right here, and we will pick up in the next one.